and welcome. My name is Sean Kotze and I am the PlantPX Library Architect. This video is going to showcase the library of process objects native to the new process controller. Majority of the viewers here knows and loves our library of process objects. For those who are not aware, you can go out to our Rock Automation website, go to our product compatibility and download center, search for library of process objects and download the content for free. Usually at this point, once you've downloaded the content, uh, you would want to start your application development. You'll start selecting the add-on structure that you want to utilize, and you'll start importing it into your new clean ACD file. For those that are observant, you will notice that when you import the add-on instructions into a new clean ACD file, it actually uses up some controller memory space. In the future, we will have the library of process objects native to the new process controller. You will notice here at the top, at the instruction palette, we will have a new tab called Plant PX. Our library of process objects will be populated here. So what did we do by embedding the uh, library of process objects into, into the process controller? We solved two things. Firstly, you don't have to go to a website anymore to go download the content. And secondly, you don't have to pay the price for the memory utilization because the instructor is already part of the of the controller software. Right. We have a lab out there called HOL03 and part of this HOL3 we are asking you to uh, use utilize one of the new process objects instructions and configure them. So in the HOL3 lab I will give you an incomplete process strategy. I'll ask you to go to the plant PX tab, go select the analog in instruction, drop it in here, connect all the connectors up and start configuring our instruction. So if you're anything like me, usually when I um, want to configure my instructions, I will instantiate my instructions, download the controller and go to the HMI. Once I'm at the HMI, I would launch the HMI faceplates and start doing my configuration from the HMI. Usually because course it's easier to understand what, what the tag configurations are rather than going to our controller scope tags, searching for what config tag is specifically for fail open or fail close or what's my high limit or low limit, things like that. We basically brought that experience down to the controller. We now have the, a new configuration dialog property panel to do the configuration in here. So let's go explore that a little bit. Here I've got one of my native instructions and if I click on this ellipsis box, I will get out my new dialog configuration property panel. First thing that you'll notice here on the general page is we've got these new introduced summer diagrams. Because the instructions are now part of uh, native to the controller, you won't be able to see um, inside the logic of the controller anymore. So we're trying to give you some, some form of indication of what the flow of logic is going to look like. Example, here I've got my raw 4 to 20 milliamp signal coming in. The next thing that happens is scaling. After that, we will have clamping. We've got some substitutions happening here. Where we've got uh, uh, filter ordering here, and then eventually we've got our output value. Notice that we've got a blue line going all, all the way down to the output value. This is animated. If I change my source for my um, input value, this animation will disappear. Example, let's uh, change the substitution value here. If I click the use substitute value, you'll notice that we've got the blue line animating here from the right, and the output value is being generated from the substitute PV value. Let's unselect it. And you'll notice that the animation goes back. For this video, I'm not going to go through the PV fail check and the advanced tabs. If you are familiar with our library of process objects, these are usually the settings that you'll get on our maintenance and advanced tabs. Um, those is nothing different. It's uh, it's the same type of configurations. This is quite an important configuration if you want your HMI to work. On the HMI tab, you have to fill in these properties. Um, just because for we are showcasing this well in advance and this is beta software, this is not populated um, by default. Um, but in the future, this, the, you should have these uh, values populated by default. But for now, you have to configure these so your HMI displays will work. 
All right, let's talk about alarming. Our library of press objects native to the controller is on now utilizing the logic tag based alarms that was introduced in V31. So when you instantiate an instruction, you will by default get all these alarms. And when you start doing your alarm rationalization process, you will enable alarms that you require and you'll start doing the configuration at that point in time. So you don't have to go instantiate all your instructions anymore, run it through the alarm builder tool, um, generate the XML content and import that into your HMI server. It's now all part of the instruction and you, it's enabled by default. All right, look at here at the right hand side, we've got a thing called state here. If we click on the state ellipsis box, it will actually open up the logic tag based alarm dialog property panel. Typical configurations that you'll get here is your on delay, off delay, severities, alarm messages, shelving durations, um, your class alarm group, do you want alarms to be latched, do you want alarm sets to be rolled up, and do you want alarm set operations. And you'll get your status indicators here. Some of these alarms have a common properties, example like class, alarm group, and factory talk command. Um, what we've done here is we've given you the capability of propagating all the alarm configurations to all the alarms. So if I say apply following settings to all alarms, and I populate these values, it will actually um, populate it to your alarm property panel. So let's quickly go look here. Let's take the high alarm. I've got a class and you'll notice that everything is empty. Okay, let's cancel here. And I'm going to say this class is awesome. And let's do the alarm group. This group is having fun. Right, now if I hit the apply button, it will propagate all these values to all eight of the alarms uh, here at the top. Once the application has been completed, it will uncheck the box here uh, until you uh, decide you want to propagate all the alarm settings to all the alarms again. Let's go open up that same high, high alarm again. Go to the class and you'll see that the class and alarm group has been populated. And let's go to any one of the other ones, low deviation, class, all of that's been completed for you. The parameter tabs will look like any other instruction and a tag uh, page will look as like any other of the other instructions as well. All right, this is more or less an overview of the library of process objects native to the process controller. If you can get your hands on the HOL03 lab, you can go through the lab and play a bit through all of this content. Thank you for your time and I hope you have fun uh, utilizing the new library of process objects inside the new process controller.